Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Julia DeGraw, running for Portland City Commissioner, Position 2. Welcome, Julia. Hello, thanks for having me. Yeah. Please tell us a little about yourself, uh, why you're running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all the candidates for this office. Yeah, definitely. Again, uh, my name is Julia DeGraw, and I'm running for Portland City Council Position 2. Um, I ran for this seat a couple of years ago in 2018 um, on a system change platform. Um, I have a 15-year career in the nonprofit sector doing a lot of campaign and policy work. Um, it included uh, a nine-year uh, fight to keep a Nestle water bottling facility out of the Columbia River Gorge. And it also included doing a lot of policy work at the, the municipal and state level. And, and with the city of Portland, that meant engaging on a number of, of water-related issues. And um, I really uh, became aware of uh, the, the dysfunction of the commission form of government, in my opinion, and the inequities of um, electing people through citywide elections. And I really campaigned on the need to elect folks from across the city, from city council districts, to increase representation on council, and to have elected officials who are more focused on uh, creating policies and finding the solutions to our biggest long-term problems um, rather than the day-to-day -day operations of bureaus. So that was really uh, the, my drive for running the first time. And I think that those issues are as if not more relevant now than they were two years ago after the City Club report came out. And even the League of Women Voters has done a report on this issue. Um, and we're heading into a charter review year and I'm the kind of candidate you want in that seat um, who understands the system as it is, can operate in the system as it is as well as possible but who is ready to uh, engage in a deep community engaged process to, to head into uh, a charter review process that leads to system change. So that's, that's why I'm running. Thank you. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small businesses, city employee layoffs and housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Yeah, this is, uh, frankly, uh, because of um, a lot of the major issues with uh, the commission form of government, um, we've, we, uh, and, and other revenue issues that pre-existed before COVID, um, we, had, we already had some very large systemic problems. The housing crisis was already a crisis before uh, we had a pandemic on our hands. Um, and what I've been saying from the beginning of this campaign, um, and something that I think makes me stand out against, uh, against uh, other candidates who are running for this seat, is I really talk about uh, our problems as they, uh, in a systemic way. I don't talk about them in isolation one from the other because they're generally related to each other. And we need to work collaboratively across bureaus and across the, 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 commissioner, the commissioners and across jurisdictions to address these large systemic problems. And that is particularly true with COVID, uh, with responding to this crisis. Um, unfortunately, we can't be expecting to get the kind of major resources we should be getting from the federal government uh, in order to uh, make sure that our small businesses have the money that they need to uh, keep people on payroll. So what I would be recommending at this time is that uh, municipalities like Portland and the state of, and up to the state of Oregon dip into our reserves that are there for emergency situations to, uh, to create, to, to fund uh, all the local businesses with the stipulation that they keep people on payroll because they need that assistance yesterday. That need, they need that assistance. I mean, most small businesses uh, don't have more than a month or so of operating uh, money in, their, in the bank at any given time. They're not gonna withstand this shutdown if we don't get money in their hands. And Portland, more so than other cities across the United States, is a small business town. They employ over half the um, employees in our city and uh, we need to act quickly to keep them afloat. Um, and, and, and again, there's, so, and I would also recommend using reserve funds for, for keeping um, parks and other uh, things that operate more on fees and the usage of the public 
um, we need to dip into the reserve funds to, to keep those afloat as well, because that's going to be what it takes in order to keep this from becoming a much longer term depression era situation. If we maintain our current government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? So we're going to maintain this at least through 2020. So uh, we are going to have a charter review process that I'm very excited about engaging in um, and, and engaging the community in. Um, however, for the, that, that duration where we're going to continue to have this form of government, there are a number of bureaus I'm interested in. But I think the one that makes the most sense and is my number one choice is the, the Water Bureau um, and Environmental Services. Uh, my career has been spent um, working on environmental issues and particularly with a focus on water. I've been invited to give expert testimony on water issues as a professional when I um, was the senior organizer at Food and Water Watch. I have a really deep policy background there and I think that I could um, uh, hit the ground running with that position um, and then be able to support uh, other commissioners on other issues that are near and dear to my heart, like working with Joanne, uh, Har Commissioner Hardesty, excuse me, on police accountability, like everyone is doing on council right now, and working with Chloe Daly's office um, on really uh, revolutionizing our transportation department to get us on track for carbon uh, emission reduction. Thank you. You already alluded to this, but how would you address the public's significant concerns about police and community relations, the use of deadly force, and officer accountability? Yeah, this is uh, something I campaigned on last time as well. Uh, it's it's a huge issue, and according to the, the police, the, the police, the, their own data, their own report, um, uh, over seventy percent of Portlanders don't trust the police right now. That, that's that's a complete breakdown in in, in trust. And, and I really believe that trust is predicated on accountability. We need to be able to see that officers are held accountable uh, to excessive force, uh, to, to racial profiling, um, and, and, and we've, had, we've just seen too many examples of that not happening, of, the, of accountability not, not occurring in the police force, and that's why this trust is dwindling. I, I think one of the major priorities is getting a more community-centered police contract. I've been working on that over the last year um, as the executive director at Portland Forward and on the steering committee of Portland Metro People's Coalition. I was working with a network of organizations that were really um, uh, trying to keep the pressure up in the process for the, the negotiation of the new police contract to get more um, independent community oversight built in uh, to um, and to just to build in a lot more community-centered uh, uh, and accountability uh, um, prospects within the, 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 um, the contract with the PPA. Uh, between uh, negotiations, though, of this contract, we're going to have to continue working on this because we're not going to solve all these problems from one uh, renegotiated contract. We're going to have to continue working on policies uh, that um, improve community oversight and accountability with the police so we can start restoring that trust. And I, I also believe that part of that includes um, having a much less militarized response to protests in the streets, but we have a short time for answers, so I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> well, thank you. That's actually the, all we have time for. Mm. So thank you very much for coming out today. And uh, this has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.